Why are you here? You're here to outwork. You're here to outtrain. You're here to win. Here with Pat Downey. Hey, Pat, thanks for taking the time to weigh in with me today. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Hey, I just saw you a couple days ago over at Final X. Um, I've never seen you wrestle live in person before. What were your thoughts on the entire thing? Um, Man, I thought it was good. I thought, uh, I mean, in general, I never think think it's good to lose. Obviously, it's to my performance. But as far as the... uh, the actual event, I thought it was great. I don't know. I think it had a lot of fans, and I mean, I personally enjoyed being part of it. So yeah. How much training did you get in before Final X, and where were you training if you were training? Well, um, well I'm always training. I guess I'm always ready. Like what I feel like I, I feel like I'm always ready. So, so like, I've been in Baltimore, so I was doing a lot of stuff on my own, running and uh. And basically just running because I don't really have many partners here. But I had a great base shape at Iowa. Yeah. I had five, six healthy months put in there. So I had a good base shape. Even going into like the uh the open and the uh and the trials, but yeah, after two months there I didn't get on the mat with anybody, so it was a little tough. Uh not you know, because wrestling shape's different. Totally. So I'm always in good shape, but you know, that real wrestling shape it's just different. So I was able to get on the mat for two weeks with uh, Jaden Cox and uh, Kevin Jackson out there at the Olympic Training Center. So I was actually felt feeling more prepared for the final X. I felt way better going into that than I did uh, the trials or the Open, just because I did that two-week camp under my belt. Where do you get this mental toughness? You, know, you got a mental edge to you that a lot of kids don't have. Not that you're a kid, but you're younger than me. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, I, think you know, I think that stuff, mental toughness, or whatever you want to think, call it, mindset, uh, for me personally, it's probably just a product of my environment. You know, I, I was raised a certain way. I grew up in a certain area from East Baltimore, Birdie Park. Uh, so I've, I've always had that as a kid. Like, you know, as long as, long as I can remember, I've never been, like, scared of anybody. So I was just raised that way. Um. How does that affect you when you're training? Like, do you feel like that gets stronger when you're training hard, or does it just always stay Pat Downey strong? Well, well, that's the thing because you know everybody uh, looks at it as such an attribute, but it, at times it gives you a false sense of security because you you have this almost unrealistic idea. I genuinely believe I can just come off the couch after not wrestling for two months and win the U.S. Open. That's ridiculous because. I took seventh at the U.S. Open. That's clearly not the case. Yeah. So, so on one hand, you know, it's good to have it, but on the other hand, when I'm uh, actually training and living the right lifestyle and I'm consistent and I have really, really good preparation, that's when the real confidence hits because then, it, then the mentality meets, you know. It has a reason. I have a reason to feel that way mentally. What percentage of your competitive life have you, been do- have you done that? Right, trained the right, the lifestyle like you're just talking about. I'll do it for a little clips at a time, you know, a couple of weeks before the, you know the world trials. I get I get it right. I try to get it real quick, but going into this 2020 cycle, I'm really really seeing the big pictures. My dad and I have been talking a lot more. I mean, if I would had what I did the last two weeks, even for two months, starting back at the Open, I think I have a completely different result, and I'm on that national team. I'm probably, you know, I think I'm wrestling Taylor in the finals. So, and that's just two months of consistency. So, I think if I can put it together for two years, I think I'll be a real problem and a real threat to accomplish my goals. So, before we started recording, you talked about uh, heading out to the OTC soon. When's that happening, and how long are you going to be there? Um... Well, I'm gonna, after I finish running these camps with uh, Eliezer and I, uh, uh, two weeks here of all period where I'm not really training and on the mat, I'll be running camps and uh, you know, kind of giving body downtime and that's so a, cross- that's in so Oregon, active. right? Give a shout What's out. That? Where are you going in Oregon? Are they all filled up? Well, they're not all filled up. I'll be there for two weeks. We got three scheduled: one in Oregon, one and uh, two in like Northern Cali. 
you got to answer these are the exact spots because that's his spot, the West Coast, so that's his area. Gotcha. So after that, that's when you're going to the OTC? Yeah, I plan on flying back to Baltimore, and I'm going to drive drive my truck out there, and I'm just going to relocate there until 2020. So that's going to be your, your stay in there? Oh, yeah. You're all in on 2020? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted to wrestle you a little bit after Final X, but I was afraid you were going to hurt me. Um, what What's your walk around weight? Yeah, that wouldn't have been the best time to wrestle me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> uh, I don't know. The biggest I've ever been is 205, 208. Uh, that's the most I've ever personally seen on the scale. But I'm pretty lean kid. I walk around like 195. I can always hit that 86 kilos at any workout. I usually weigh 86 after every practice, if not a little lighter, 85. Okay. Um, yeah, you look lean when, I, when I've seen you. I've never seen you get that big. Were you always like that as a kid, like able to just kind of maintain an athletic uh, fit style? Yeah, I mean, like, I grew up, I played all the sports, you know, even before right? I was boxing and judo and football and, you know, trampoline, basketball. I love every sport. So I always thought about an athletic build, but, uh, Honestly, until high school, I was always real thick and stocky. Huh. And then freshman year, I don't know where I just, arms, legs, everything grew. And I was like a 145-pound wiry kid not even growing into his body. So then I really started filling out this my frame throughout high school. And by the time I graduated, I was, you know, uh, same size. Obviously, I've gotten a lot different looking at the same size. But I won senior nationals at 189. I won Fargo at 171. So... By the time I was graduating, I was about a buck eighty, and now I'm like a two hundred pound man. So I, I still am built the same way though, you know, lean and wiry. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did you three sports in high school: football, lacrosse, wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. What, what What are your thoughts on all those three sports? You know, one sentence, two sentences. Like, why did you end up choosing wrestling versus those two? Well, it was a really easy choice to be honest, because I originally had a. Uh, committed to play football at Old Dominion. I was going to go, and they were a D1 double-A program at the time, and they also had for wrestling. And right, uh, my one senior national, I went there on a visit and met with the coaches, and that was my plan. But uh, I got this opportunity, Bobby Douglas, to go out to Fargo. And I was told if I went out to wrestle in Fargo, I could have a, and, and I perform, I could uh, have a spot at the Olympic Training Center. So my dad and I were like, well, shit, you got to try to do whatever sport you're going to do at the highest level. So we didn't see anything higher than at that time than I was trying to make that 2012 Olympic team. So, uh, but yeah, I never was really comfortable with freestyle because of playing football and stuff all the time. So my senior year, I finally was able to wrestle freestyle. I went out to Fargo and did all right. And then I got a bed at the Olympic Training Center. And that's all she wrote from there. Gotcha. Now, I, I describe you when I talk uh, about you as an individual, and there are so few individuals left in our society. It's one of the reasons I've, I've wanted to talk to you for a long time. You've been everywhere. You've been in OTC, Nebraska, Iowa, Iowa, all over Iowa. How many schools? Three schools in Iowa? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we started at, after the training center. I got that silver medal. I went to Nebraska, right short of there, and then I ended up graduating from Iowa Central. We had a great team there. Uh, I, our team won a national title. I won one. And then I uh, went to Iowa State where I became an All-American. And then, you know, the last two years, eligibility didn't, didn't even get to use them, basically. You know, had two shots at the national tournament that I didn't get to wrestle in. But, yeah, man, I'm, I, I think I'm done with Iowa, though. My tenure out there is done. <laughs> it's done. Tell me, what do you think about your journey, like looking back? says poor network connection. Can you uh, repeat that one? I, yeah. I did, w When you think back about your journey, like tell me – nice ear, man. Tell me about your journey. Like what do you think about like all those stops you make like from the OTC and Nebraska and all over Iowa and ending up at Iowa, University of Iowa? I mean do you think about that mm -hmm. stuff and think, you know, damn NCAA you know, eligibility or what, – what are your thoughts on that? Well – you know, I got I got, I have mixed feelings about it. At times, I look in the mirror and say, "Oh man, it's all on you." You know, you know why? Uh, 
why can't you just, you know, bit your tongue or bit the bullet and play the game? You know, some guys say fake it till you make it. You got all these different slangs and, uh, you know, analogies and yardies, if you will, to try to deal with it. But at the end of the day, you know, I am who I am and that's all that I am. So if, you, if they don't like me, you know, it can really kiss my ass, I guess. So, <laughs> I mean, so that so wasn't cut out for the NCAA. They, 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 I feel like I didn't get my, uh, fair crack at it, that's for sure, I definitely still feel, you know, that's why I think I'm getting, I'm finding this motivation for 2020, is because I'm not ready to leave the sport, I feel like if I had wrestled 97 this year, got my national title, you know, I probably would have started fighting by now, so, it's not what I wanted to happen, but I think the things that are happening in my life are things that have to happen, you know, I believe, I couldn't have never scripted this journey, like you just said, you know, from here to there to here to there. Could have never planned it out. So it definitely hasn't been my plan. But uh, I definitely think someone else is, uh, you know, whether it's God or whatever have you, I think there's somebody, uh, you know, coordinating this to make to make things happen for a reason. Two things I want to, you kind of touched on. One is, you talk about fighting. Do you plan on fighting after wrestling? But yeah, I'm actually I'm actually looking into making my pro debut October sixth on my dad's birthday. So I plan on fighting in conjunction with wrestling. Okay, who are you gonna fight for, and where is it gonna be? Well, I would fight for Shogun Fighting, run by uh, John Rollo, of Baltimore, make my home, my debut at home. Okay, so when yes. is it? October sixth. At around five. Yes, sir. That's, that's, what, that's what we're looking for. So, okay. If things don't work out with uh, the Olympic Training Center, I'll be heading down south to Boca Raton and training American Top Team. Okay. Uh, the other thing. Uh, I'm sorry. Said that last thing. So I said that, I, I said there's options. It's based on you know it's based on where I can train and what I'm doing. You yep. know. So as long as I'm remaining active, I'm always going to be a combative athlete. You know, I feel like if I can wrestle, I can fight, and fight vice versa. If I can fight, I can wrestle. Right, and I, I'm when we're talking about fighting, I'm talking about like in the ring versus like how many fights have you been in? <laughs> Just fights. Uh, I can any more than I can keep count of. I know that. Gotcha. We're gonna get into yeah, that so a little. I want to talk about that. Go through their whole life without ever having a fist fight, huh? I don't know. It's just weird. I can't understand that. Um, not having a fight, but uh, hey, going back to the Iowa days. Tell me about this Honda Civic that you had that was totaled for years. Oh, yeah. That was my baby. I ran her into the ground. So it was a functionally totaled car? Oh, yeah. A little go-kart. We call it the go-kart. I'd be riding up on curves. I'd ride it around the park wherever with it. It was awesome. 40 miles a gallon, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. But now you got a nicer ride. Um, what are you driving these days? Some kind of oh, big yeah. pickup? Yeah. Lost you for a second. You there? Pat, can you hear me? Pat, can you hear me? Oh, I'm lo- Can you hear me, man? Pat, can you hear me? I'm going to try to change the area. I got a bad connection here for some reason. Okay. I'm going to keep talking to you. Can you hear me? Yeah, but barely. Fair. Breaking in and out. I'm going to keep talking to you. If we, were, if, we watched, if we watched you wrestle in the practice room, what kind of wrestler would we see? Hey, what kind of wrestler would we see in the practice room? Yeah, what, what would we see you looking like in the practice room? Yeah, you can ask, you can ask them in Iowa, you can ask wherever I've been. I go, I go hard when I'm there. I'm there for business, you know. I take, I take this stuff very seriously when I'm in there, and it's my passion. I love it. So, you know, my will, my will to win, and my my effort, my compete, the way I compete, my effort. You you see that every day when I train. Do you have um, like a favorite training partner? Uh. Well, man, training with Coxie's last two weeks, I can't, I can't really say I've, uh, I could ask for a better training partner than him. But uh, what was he like to he train with? My time. I, say it again. What was uh, Jaden like to train with? Everybody thinks he's a nice guy, but he's like, uh, 
you know, he's a freaking murderer on the map. Well, he is, but he is a nice guy. I mean, that's just, that's just the sport of it, though. You can't. You know, you can still be nice while you're whipping somebody's ass. I think that's a misconception everybody has. Like, and him and I, we're, we're we're training, we're trying to beat the shit out of each other. But afterwards, we're shaking hands and telling jokes, and it's all love. So, I mean, that's just the, that's just nature of combative athletics. Any, any, I mean, I feel like you find most of these combative athletes, we are nice people. You know, for the most part, but obviously, you gotta have some type of edge to you to make you want to get out there and. Uh, go to war with another person and see who's the better man, you know? Yep. Uh, this is kind of a... So, sometimes, like, you know, you're in the media for, you know, moving around. People, you know, you've been a silver medalist for, junior, like, at the Junior Worlds, um, you know, Fargo, NHSCA. I mean, you, you've got a long list of credentials. Do you think anybody ever loses sight of how good a wrestler you are versus, you know, your individualistic lifestyle, and do you not that you even care, but it's like you know when you go to a message board, they're like, "Hey, Pat, ba- Pat Downey, this or that." But dude, you're a stud, right? You ever yeah, read that? And part of me, part of me gets irritated because I wish, I wish people would just focus on what matters, the rest of them. So part of me, part of me is like, why does, why does anybody care anything else about, you know, anything else other than wrestling? So it's a contest of wrestling. So I mean, I don't know why we're why people are talking about, you know, if I take a picture with a girl or if I, you know, if I want to go out and eat crabs and drink an Eddie Boat with my, with my dinner or I don't know why, why people seem to, to care about my uh, lifestyle off the mat, but that, that, that's people, you know, I can't be, I can't be worrying about them and, and what they're going to say. I can't control that stuff, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just loving the process. I guess is what you would say. Like I really do. I enjoy. I enjoy my life, and uh, I love what I do every day. And I love how I do it. And at the end of the day, I go to sleep happy with what I see in the mirror. So all right. I'm not mad about it. I know a bunch of guys who know you. They all tell me the same thing when I talk about you. Downey is the smartest dude they know. <laughs> like. Well, tell me about, are, are your grades good? Are you just street smart? How do these guys all say, like I've asked three or four guys that know you and they say the exact same thing. Yeah, those who know me know what I'm about, man. I'm, I got I got to uh, pride myself in my vocabulary. I mean, I'm in the process of finishing grad school. I'll have to write a dissertation for my PhD. I mean, all this media shit, and mar- it's, it's just a facade. It's, it's, it's marketing yourself. It's free entertainment, and that's what this is. The entertainment industry. I mean, these dudes wonder why Ben Askren isn't in the UFC or anybody's getting big names. Well, they don't sell themselves, and they're boring. You know, they're, they're, nobody wants to see it. There's a reason when you know I wrestle whomever it is that the servers shut down, and I get a lot of watchers because you know I'm talking this shit, and party wants to deny it and say, "Hey, it's not going to happen." And part of part of some people that love me wants to believe in it. But regardless, whether you love me or hate me, both work out in my favor because you're watching. <laughs> What's your graduate degree in? Sam, well, I haven't finished grad school yet, but I had uh, another thing. Like to, to do all this, these endeavors with my uh, transfers, I have to, I was, well, now they changed the transfer rule. So I mean, I could have done whatever. But now, but under the time, I was under the NCAA stipulations of the 424 transfer. So, I'm taking 18 credits a semester at Iowa Central. Then I take 24 credits at Iowa State. These are all to graduate, so I can be eligible to transfer in the spring. Right. So, so that's not easy either. And then I take the grad school requirement exam. So not only do I have to have a GPA high enough to get into grad school, I have to take something that's like three times as hard as the SAT. So, you know, to get into that science, that STEM program, you know, I don't, I don't think you can be a dummy. Yeah. Yep. Um, who are your biggest wrestling influences? Oh, definitely my uh, my my late coach Tom DeCarlo, Golden Ring, first coach coach I ever wrestled for. Uh, just just at a young age, and it was ingrained a certain mentality. You know, I was never taught technique, or I was never taught or told I had to be athletic. You know, and now as I grew as an athlete, I I, I got all these other intangibles. 
know, talent. He was hips and less of athleticism and balance. But, but the intangible that Tom DeCarlo ingrained in, in me is toughness. That was the first rule that I was taught in sport. you got to be tough. Yeah. So, but nothing else mattered if you were, as long as you were tough, but you could teach technique, you know? Yep. Can't really teach toughness, I don't think. It's tough to teach toughness. It's not easy. Yeah. You figure that one out, let me know, because I see a ton of talent and I see a ton of technical kids, but at the end of the day, they just don't got the heart. And, that, and that's what really, that's what I, what I think is uh, it can't be taught. Speaking of the heart, this is not an Illuminati tattoo on the middle of your chest, is it? With the all-seeing eye? What is that? No, no, no. It's the eye of uh, Horus. 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 Right. Yeah, you look into your, into your soul and you're judged. It's basically a... Basically, the first, uh, you know, found thing of humans facing back to humans, starting some type of heaven and hell, good versus evil. You know, I got the end of the gang. I'm all into that. The angels and the demons. You know, you got the good side and the bad side. Gotcha. All right. Let's say you were training really hard for two months, OTC, and then regardless of age or weight, you could pick anybody in the world to wrestle. Who would it be? Sajulayev. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. I'm going back down to 86, though. Down <laughs> to 86. Okay. Yeah. Will you be doing any, uh, speaking of Sajulayev, will you be wrestling anything you know, in any foreign tournaments uh, this fall, this summer? Mm, that's always the uh, million-dollar question, man. I don't know my schedule as of now. So, so literally, I'm just going to run these camps, and I'm, I'm going to submerge myself into a training situation. Whether it be at the OTC or whether it be an American top team. Okay. I just know I need to be training. Gotcha. So, so what, whatever I'm training for is unknown yet. That's totally unknown, but I'll figure that out. Changing gears here. Richie Lewis, another individual at the college level. Yeah, you know, I know you guys were teammates at Iowa Central. Tell me a little bit about the, the fight you guys had on campus. Oh, it was, it was, uh, you, I don't know how you would describe it. It escalated from practice, so we were in practice. And now you chased, know, did you chase him across campus? Yeah, yeah, I wasn't really done. I wasn't done after practice. Yeah, I guess you could say something. Yeah, I went looking for him. I went and found him. Yeah, but, you know, it was more of a respect thing. We were wrestling each other, and he didn't, he didn't feel like I was respecting him when we were wrestling because I kept going. I guess I was cornering him or something. So so then he disrespected me because he felt disrespected by me. And then he spit on me, and I felt super disrespected. And now the coaches are in between us. And now we both we both are uh, left talking words. So it escalated after practice. And, and that, uh, But, yeah, we, we, uh, we did what we had to do. We solved our problem, and we shook hands right after and we moved on and went on to win a team national title that year. So, and now you guys are buddies too, right? Oh, we were buddies before. We were buddies after. Yeah. Well, give me some. Give me a, a story that Richie is embarrassed about. That he's embarrassed of. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um. I don't know how far I can throw my man's under the bus now. <laughs> you have to throw him under the bus, but something you know, something funny, man. Whoa. I know. I know he's uh. I know, he, I know he took a hit when uh, an old girl swindled him for his clothes and shoes. For real? Had, a, had, this, had this sneaky lady from Washington, D.C. Her name was Omar. She, she took everything he had in his closet? She took him for his closet. I'm going to bust his balls about that later. You got to. Ask him about it. I will. All right. That's awesome. Dude, give me your thoughts on Kevin Jackson. What's that? Give me your thoughts on Kevin Jackson. Oh, KJ, he's the best, man. I I, uh, I love wrestling for him at Iowa State. Besides the whole lineup switching in the, my first year at American, you know, I would cut down to 84, had that broken rib. I would have really liked to wrestle 84 that year. But uh, I did what was best for the team and stuff, and, and we ended up, it worked out. I think we went on ranked to top 10. That 2016 year, uh, 
But then obviously I was super hurt when he got fired, man, because I committed to Kevin. Yeah. Coach KJ recruited me there, you know. He gets fired in the middle of the season. I knew it was, uh, you know, shit was bound to hit the fan with me. I never had the tightest relationship with uh, Angel, and, and that's who they gave the reins to. And then Kevin Dresser takes over, and I really didn't have much of a opportunity to prove myself there because as soon as I didn't get to wrestle, I went and moved to the farm with Ben in Scandinavia, Wisconsin, a town of 100 people. So now KJ's back at the uh, Olympic Training Center. That's awesome, you know, because he's my favorite. Uh, it's not like these other coaches who teach you stuff and then you, you just got to know where they're getting their information from. You know, this this dude's teaching stuff. He, he did. Yeah. So, I mean, yep. he, he won two world titles and he won an Olympic title. So when Kevin Jackson talking, pat down, he listens. So I like that. Nice. Um, I can listen to. Thoughts on the NCAA? Uh, NCAA is a bunch of amateur criminal bullshit. Yeah. I get, I get real irritated talking about it. Got it. All right. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. That, I'm, I'm down with that. Look, I, I think that they are, uh, you know, they're. I, I'm not a fan of the NCAA. Tell me a little bit about your time at Iowa, at Iowa and Tom Brands, or the Brands brother as a rule. Oh, that was awesome. I guess they didn't feel like I really connected with the guys outside of the room. But uh, inside of the room, they loved the way I competed and wrestled. I mean, the training was great. I got along with everybody. I love the guys on the team. Everybody has this uh, kind of stereotypical mold of these Iowa guys, you know. And uh, it couldn't be farther from the truth. They're just uh, a close-knit group of dudes, so they're a family, you know? So if you're an outsider, they're not going to let you inside to see their dy- inner family dynamic, you know? So you kind of – everybody kind of has the wrong perception of them, which is fine. They like that. They want to be perceived as, as that because, you know, it, 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 it fuels what they are. And they're going to have a great team this year too, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was an honor being able to train. Uh, it was, like I said, as a little boy living in East Baltimore, Rico Ciparelli was the last national champ from from Baltimore, and he did it at Iowa. So I grew up seeing his picture in uh, Little Italy, and uh, I just thought it was awesome, the Baltimore Butcher. So as a child, it would have been a dream come true getting to wrestle for them this year and win that title for him. How old are you right now, Pat? What's that? How old are you? 25, born in 92. So if you could go back right now and give yourself any advice as a high school athlete or a high school person, would you give yourself any advice? Yeah. Get this amateur shit done with as quickly as possible so I can be pro at 21. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, we've talked about wrestling you're into the 2020 cycle. If, if you feel like, what's going to let you know if it's not working and you're going to make a transition to MMA? Well, I, I got to go out of the sport with uh, my turn. Now I got to... Losing you. Pat Downey. Got it. Beating me, and I can have the best version of myself. Then I can hang my shoes up and just say, you know what? I look in the mirror and say, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't good enough to be the world champ. There are guys that are better than me, but I'm still not convinced. That's why I'm still, you know, I'm not convinced yet. So I'm not going anywhere. Let's say, um, let's say you're on the Olympic team in 2020. You you get it out of your system. You go fight, not out of your system, but you know you feel like you've kind of completed the wrestling journey. You go into yeah. MMA. Do you see MMA as a long-term career for yourself, or do you see yourself oh, yeah. as a scientist or something at a later date? No, no, no. I'm trying, I'm trying to fight till I die. I, to, I, don't, I, don't, I love this combative athletic stuff. You know, like these guys like Cormier and Yellow Romero. I don't need Hopefully, fight till I'm 40. I'm, a, I'm really going to take, take care of my body, and uh, I plan on having 15 years left as an athlete. So, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Hey, taking care of your body, what kind of food do you eat? Can't hear you. It's tough, but uh, honestly, 
I've been doing a lot better job. Elias are getting. The reception's really bad. I missed everything you just said. Can you hear me? Back with Pat after a little uh, reception issue. Hey, Pat, tell me what people should be thinking about for the next several months while you're out there training. Give me a good close. Well, they need to be thinking about how good I'm going to be when I get all this training in because I'm down here this close to making the team doing it on my own, you know? I think they need to be worried because I'm coming. Nice. Um, so you got camps coming up, then the OTC, and then you're gonna. You might even be fighting in the fall too. That's right. Busy man. Keep an eye out for Pat Downey. Anything else for the fans? No, no, no. I'm good. Unattached assassin out. <laughs> hey man, thanks for the time. No problem, man. Good question. Thanks for talking.